Imagine two employers. Both employers pay their respective employees equivalently in accordance with wage regulations. However, the first employer does so begrudgingly, mainly out of fear of being sued should employees not receive their remuneration or be underpaid. On the other hand, the second employer does so with gladness and gratitude, knowing that the remuneration paid is their employees just return for their work. For which employer would you prefer to work for? Although some might be indifferent, same work, same wage, what big difference? I propose that most would rather work for the second employer. Why? Because even if one is unable to articulate it, one can sense that the second employer acts more ethically than the first employer. This illustration demonstrates that there is a difference between acting legally and ethically, even though neither of the employers are acting wrong per se, and indeed a difference between ethics and the law. In this video, we shall briefly outline three common misconceptions. That ethics is the same as the law, that ethics is the same as socially accepted standards of behavior, and lastly, that ethics is the same as emotions. Bioethics Brief Introductions with Eric Manuel Torres. As we have seen with the opening illustration, ethics is not the same as the law. However, this is arguably the most prevalent misconception out there. For this reason, we shall spend a bit more time on this misconception. A general definition of law from St. Thomas Aquinas is that law is nothing else than an ordinance of reason for the common good made by him who has care of the community and promulgated. As a general definition, this definition covers the concept of law without detailing the specific subvariance of law. When dealing with this misconception, the sort of law in question here is human law, that is, law created by human lawmakers. Civil law, common law and criminal law are examples of human law. Such laws are developed and promulgated by government or other authority on behalf of the community as to regulate interactions between individuals and individuals and the state. In other words, human laws are rules to organize harmonious living within society, ideally for the common good. In a moral society, human laws would align with ethics. Indeed, contrary to the belief that the law somehow makes things ethical. Ethics pre-exists before any human law, and therefore the law ought to reflect correct morals. However, alas, we do not live in a moral society. Not all of our human laws will match our rightly held moral convictions. To be more precise, not all human laws the law is from divine law, which itself derives from eternal law, nor accurately reflect natural law. Such human laws, not rooted in divine law and natural law, are unjust laws. And as unjust laws, they are contrary to the good and therefore not binding to conscience. St. Thomas Aquinas described such unjust laws as acts of violence rather than laws. And furthermore, quoting from St. Augustine, states that a law that is not just seems to be no law at all. Therefore, in instances of unjust human laws, following such laws would go against morals. Put simply, being ethical is not merely doing what the law requires. Hence, legal does not always equal ethical. 
An implication of this is that recourse to the law is generally unhelpful when facing an ethically challenging situation. Similarly, pure reliance on the law is unwise as human law ought not substitute a well-informed moral conscience, nor be used as an ethical guide by default. Nowadays, it's not uncommon that a healthcare professional might have a conflict between certain ethical principles or their moral conscience and a lawful request for a health service. Such contentious issues include abortion and more recently euthanasia. However, for purpose of example, let us use slavery as now slavery is almost universally condemned. This condemnation derives from an understanding that ownership of another fellow human is immoral. Yet, there was a time when it was legal to own slaves. Did such legal sanction make slavery ethical? Just because the law might permit owning slaves, does it make it right? Not at all. Its legality is what's better referred as a legal fiction. That is, something that merely exists in the law for sake of convenience, but is not true. Slave ownership is unethical, regardless what the law of the time might suggest. Likewise, there are a number of things which the law might allow even obligate, yet one cannot cooperate with in good conscience. The second misconception is that ethics is the same as socially accepted standards of behaviour. However, that is not the case. As with law, one would hope that what society approves is ethical. Yet, the fact that we do not live in a moral society means that not everything approved is ethical. In fact, some things might be contrary to what is good. What is right is not always popular, and what is popular is not always right, is a quote attributed to Albert Einstein. This assessment is correct. As one cannot surrender one's rightly held morals and conscience to the winds of society. As with slavery, it was once legal, but moreover, it was also socially acceptable. Indeed, slave ownership was an indicator of social status. Therefore, the mere fact that something is popular or socially approved does not automatically signify that it is moral. It is worthy to observe that the suggestion that what society approved or is popular equates to ethical behaviour has a strong utilitarian flavour. Utilitarianism can be best summarised with their maxim. The greatest good for the greatest number which is credited to the English philosopher Jeremy Banham. At face value, what this maxim postulates is that whatever seems beneficial for the majority is the way to go. At first, this might seem convincing. However, at closer inspection, we realise that this cannot always be the right way to act. For example, let us imagine that paramedics arrive at an accident site and find that the victim is still alive, yet in great need of urgent medical attention. Indeed, the injuries are life threatening. However, with prompt and adequate medical care might survive. But instead of stabilizing the victim and rushing to hospital, they let the victim die. The paramedics reason that they didn't cause the accident nor provoke the death. Moreover, 
the organs and tissues of the now deceased victim can potentially benefit many patients awaiting transplants. However, do these reasons justify the action that the paramedics took? I would argue not so. Just because something will apparently benefit more people doesn't automatically make the action the right thing to do. Lastly, let us look at the misconception suggesting that ethics is the same as emotions. When one ascribes to natural law ethics, for instance, we realize that right and wrong are not based on our feelings. Instead, certain things are either right or wrong, regardless of any emotions we might feel towards or against them. It is wrong to steal, even if it gives you a thrill or excitement. It is right to defend the life of our fellow man, especially the most innocent and vulnerable, even if we might feel fear or trepidation. Indeed, if ethical behavior is just following one's emotions, what about the feelings of a mass murderer? Don't tell the murderer that killing and dismembering people is wrong. Because you might hurt his or her feelings. Come on now, that's ridiculous. I bet you would say that such a criminal ought to be locked up, especially if said criminal feels that he or she is doing the right thing. Moreover, as can also be seen in this example, anything is justifiable when sentiment is the only measure. In short, the suggestion that ethics is the same as emotion fails due to reductio ad absurdum action arguments. That is, when we examine the claim following them to their logical conclusion, the result is utterly absurd. In covering these three misconceptions, the purpose is not to belittle the important role of the law, social proof behavior, nor emotions. Rather, it's to point out that such are not equivalent to ethics. Therefore, one should not blindly follow the law, social proof behavior, or emotions, but instead examine if something is truly ethical or not. In doing so, one better informs one's moral conscience, meaning that one is able to make better decisions. And should something be found to be immoral, the only correct path is to courageously follow one's well-informed conscience. To end, let me quote from St. Paul in Romans 12.2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may prove what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Thank you.